Hey folks, Z Chip with Contentment Channel, and uh, in this episode, I'm going to introduce you to a wind turbine power that we've um, brought here to Contentment. You know, living in a windy area like we do, uh, there's wind here at Contentment every day for at least I don't know a couple hours. Would you say, Robert? Probably. Yeah. And the winds seem high to us. But really, they're not all that high, anywhere from 10, maybe 15 miles per hour uh, on a windy day when it's, you know, it's gusty. Um, but the winds do get higher. I mean, you'll get gusts to 40, 50, 60. I mean, the highest recorded gust here in this valley is 83 miles per hour. So, you know, for us, it's, it's almost a no-brainer to take advantage of that wind. How much we will get out of that technology remains to be seen. But uh, in this video, you'll see that uh, you'll see the wind turbine we got. You'll see how we put it together, installed it, and uh, and got it up on the pole. I hope I never have to do that again. So let's get right on with the uh, video and installation. <music> The size turbine that we got has a two and a half inch diameter hole, mounting hole. Uh, that's the nominal uh, thick uh, width. The actual width is two and seven eighths. And so I'm looking for a closer fit. Um, the, the main mass that we're mounting this on is two and three eighths, which obviously would create way too much wiggle, see, if we tried to and that would cause the turbine to tilt and things like that. This pipe is actually two and seven eighths diameter and I welded it onto the end so that I could provide a nice fit and there's still a little bit of play in it, but that's sort of what I'm going for. And I'm hoping that in doing it this way, adding a little bit of grease and things like that, that I won't get any squeaking because anybody who knows me knows that I detest things that squeak clack, clang, you know, stuff like that. And the last thing I want is for that turbine to be up there 30 feet up where it's hard to get to and the thing be clacking and clanging all the time. Uh, so the way that the turbine is supported is with this roller wheel system, which is kind of cool. I mean, they're kind of like roller blade wheels um, that are mounted to a, a thing that supports the main structure and then it just rolls across it and it's supposed to do it really quietly. So I think that between going with this two and seven eighths pipe where there's just a little bit of give in there, I'll add some grease um, to this area right here. And then with it rolling on this and largely supported by this, hopefully there won't be too much clacking and clanging and stuff like that.
so <clears throat> this is the top of the PMA or the generator. <clears throat> That's that'll supply power from the wind. And as you can see, I need to hook up a positive uh, wire here. And on the other side, right here where it grounds to the frame uh, or to the body of the uh, generator is where I'll hook up a negative. Okay, this is the cable I'm gonna use. This is called SO cord. Anybody who's familiar with RVs, plugging in RVs at uh, uh, power supply sites and things like that would know about this cord. It's got a very heavy rubberized sheathing on it and uh, that's protected from the outdoors. Um, and then you'll notice each of, the ca each of the cords inside is sheathed as well. We've got a ground, a neutral, and a hot. I use the black for hot and the white for negative, I'm sorry, the black for positive, the white for negative. The ground is just gonna sit there and stay there for strength. Adds strength to the cord and helps it with, you know, strength when twisting in the wind and stuff like that. This is a very heavy cord. It's gonna add a lot of weight to the mast. It'll be fun to lift this up with that cord in it. By the way, this is eight gauge wire. The manufacturer of the turbine recommends 10 gauge because it's a 48 volt uh, turbine. I want a size larger so that I would lose less voltage during uh, along the length of this cord. Electricity can lose some of its voltage, particularly DC, can lose some of its voltage along a length. And I forget how much you lose. It's like 5% every 100 feet or something like that. So I'm trying to preserve as much of this electricity I'm about to capture from the wind as I can. One way to do that is to go with a slightly larger cable. So this is a tilting turbine, and as you can see when I pull it like that, it's, it's got springs that snap it back level. Uh, the reason it, it's made to tilt is to prevent overspinning. We get some pretty high winds here at times, and one of the problems you can get with a turbine is if the motor spins too high uh, or too fast, it can burn it up. So this controls that by, during high winds, causing the uh, allowing the turbine to tilt up out of the way reducing the surface area of the blades by about 50 percent so that it doesn't overspin and then when the wind calms down enough it settles back down the cool thing about this is that no matter if it's tilting or if it's straight at any position it's still producing energy if those blades are moving at all so so the manufacturer recommends that you epoxy this spacer to this hub. As you can see, before I painted it, I put them together like that to make sure I had bare metal to epoxy. I also need to epoxy the washer and nut to the threads uh, on this. I guess this thing's not coming off except with a lot of heat or something like that. show you some detail on how we installed this mast to buzz. We just took some unistrut, welded it to the metal post, and then uh, bolted the post to buzz. And of course, you know, we had to do it while the thing was uh, on site. This pole was a real bear to get up here, but uh, on the bottom here it sits on some insulating rubber because I do not want it grounding to the frame. I have other components inside of Buzz that ground to the frame, so I don't want this grounding to the frame. And then of course we have our SO cord that's coming down uh, from the uh, generator above, goes up underneath into Buzz. 
So, <laughs> added a couple more things to this. One thing is a uh, breaker. Added a 30 amp breaker for the power coming in from the turbine. Now, this is a DC turbine, DC powered turbine. Uh, it provides a DC power, but the power is pulsed because it's a, sort of a Hall effect uh, kind of motor on there or generator. So it comes in little pulses. So an AC breaker uh, will work for this. Now, listen to me carefully. <laughs> I've researched this, I know what I'm doing. Typically, you do not use AC breakers for DC power. It's kind of dangerous to do. But in this case, this is an appropriate application for this. So, uh, you know, do your own research and be sure of what you're doing before you try this kind of thing. But, um, so the way this will work is the DC power will come into this breaker, out and to the batteries, then uh, there will be another line that comes from the battery to a fuse and then up to this relay which will then go to a resistor that I have mounted inside of Buzz and I'll show you that. And this is that resistor. And as you can see, it's, uh, you know, it's just a coil basically that generates heat and uh, that's important here because uh, it's going to get pretty cold inside of Buzz and we need to maintain these batteries. So we have three purposes in getting a turbine. One is to supplement Buzz, uh, particularly during the winter months uh, when the days are shorter and there's less sunshine. Also to keep our batteries topped off. And the third one is to generate some heat because Buzz is not insulated. And there are uh, eight L16 batteries in there. Um, that if it gets cold enough will only produce about 40% of their normal power. So what we want to do is during winter months we want to keep Buzz as warm as we can. One way we can do that is with a turbine. And you might ask how? Unlike with solar panels, which if the electricity is not needed, the panels can just sit there in the sun and not be damaged. The electricity that's generated by a turbine needs to be used. It needs to be loaded uh, because if it doesn't, it will burn up that spinning motor. And so the electricity always has to have a place to go. You can actually divert that electricity when the batteries are full to a heating element mounted inside of a water heater and heat your water. And another thing you can do is heat space. And that's what we've done here. Uh, because as I said, Buzz is not insulated. It's going to get really cold here this winter. Batteries can drop as much as 60% of their efficiency during cold weather. And so it's in our best interest to keep these batteries warm. So we've opted, at least temporarily, to install that what they call a dump load resistor uh, into the trailer there that can generate heat and keep the batteries nice and toasty. I don't know if you can see it, the roller skate wheels that support the thing slid down. I had them pretty tight, but I guess not tight enough. So now I have to disconnect these wires down here to give me a little slack. Got to get up there and push up on the turbine. It's pretty heavy. It's about 60 pounds. I need to push up enough and get it supported so that I can slide those skate wheels up there again. to be seen you know how well we'll do uh, with this wind turbine and the reason I say that is because we're at 7,800 feet almost 8,000 feet in elevation and wind, wind turbines work better at sea level uh, than they do at high elevations because the air is thinner up here so you get less pressure on the blades and less activity out of the wind turbine it has to spend many many more times to give you the same electricity uh, that it would take down at sea level. 
the way one way you compensate for that is by adding extra blades to it. Um, and this does two things. This allows the wind turbine to begin spinning at a lower uh, wind speed. But the other thing it does is that it increases the drag at a high wind speed. So it's sort of a trade-off, and you have to, you know, you have to consider it, balance it out, and figure out what's best for your area. We've gone with a seven-blade uh, hub, and uh, after talking with the manufacturer, he thought that for our area and for our average wind speed, that this would be the best way for us to go. But really, to make the most of this, we really need a full-blown charge controller. What you saw in the video was nothing more than just a battery uh, overcharge protector. But we really need to install another charge controller to make the most of the wind or hydro or anything like that. Yeah. And then we'll monitor this as we go along and and uh, see how things are. But as always, we'd love to have your input on this.